every link in this chain accountable, and that includes the credit reporting agencies. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Or Senator Britt is recognized for a second short round of questions, I believe. Thank you. Um, as you know, we had a hearing yesterday over the challenges of our housing industry. Many of the affordability issues in our housing industry come from record high inflation that are crushing American families across the board. Rising prices have cost a typical household here in the U.S., over $10,000 since President Biden took office. I agree with Ranking Member Scott that we must expand home ownership to more Americans. Home ownership is especially central to families seeking to build intergenerational wealth and achieve their American dream. Mr. Beeb Gore, um, you talked about different ways, um, additional and alternative data that you all were using to help in this area. Can you talk specifically about how you're working to assist more creditworthy families to accomplish the goal of home ownership? Thank you, Senator. We're very aligned with that goal around expanding access to credit and taking the credit invisible and moving them into the formal financial environment through the use of our alternative data and our technology. And one great example is a new mortgage credit report we rolled out a few weeks ago where we're adding cell phone utility payment data that will expand that credit file and result in as many as 2.4 million subprime consumers increasing their credit score by 30 points. So we're focusing on using alternative data to expand access to housing, um, the housing market. Excellent. I hope that you'll continue to do that across the board. Um, as you know too well, there have been increasing trend of pressuring credit reporting agencies to remove certain data from their reports. The accuracy of data you collect is used for fair pricing and access to credit for hundreds of millions of people. If we continue down the path of removing all different types of data, from credit reports, I'd like for each of you to speak to some of the potential consequences that that might create. Mr. Cartwright, go ahead. Um, well, Senator, if I can begin the discussion. Um, at the outset, Ranking Member Scott um, talked about an era in financial services in this country where um, loan determinations were influenced by relationships, by community standard by prior practices. It has been an enormous innovation to the benefit of consumers to have comprehensive and accurate and objective information reported at scale to the reporting agencies. So now the decisions are data-driven and they're unbiased. Um, I feel like uh, having a truthful and comprehensive record at the foundation of lending decision is critical. Uh, nobody wins if the data is inaccurate. Nobody wins if the data is somehow cherry-picked or gerrymandered for a particular outcome. Our role is to be the custodians of this information to ensure that it's accessible to consumers and to ensure that they've got a fair process to review and dispute the information if it is inaccurate. But more information and information transparency, it drives better outcomes for consumers. Mr. Kasson. Yes, thank you, Senator. Um, I think uh, we touched upon this issue, and I think a perfect example would be, uh, for example, Experian Boost, where we've given um, millions of consumers the opportunity to add additional data to their file. And the result of that is actually that they get access to better credit and more affordable credit. So uh, really, um, the solution to this issue is to provide more data, not less, more accurate uh, reflections of how consumers have uh, repaid um, obligations uh, on time, uh, and, and to give consumers credit for that. I would add, Senator, that we have also a lot of examples from across the world um, of different systems, uh, and systems which have less information generally perform much, much poorer than systems which have more information. Uh, in the U.S., we have one of the most competitive and dynamic credit economies in the world. Lots of countries seek to emulate that. And where we have less information, it's generally worse outcomes. The more information we have, it limits and mitigates the risk. Correct. 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 Okay. Mr. Begor? Senator, I would agree. More data results in better decisions for U.S. consumers, and complete and accurate data is what our financial and credit ecosystem is built on. And I would agree with your comment as well as um, Brian's that the uh, – U.S. credit system is the envy of the world mm -hmm. with the scale of our information and the depth of information that we have and the access to credit that consumers have, but there's still so much more we can do around adding alternative data to act to really help those consumers that are not in the formal environment and move them into it. 
Absolutely. Well, yes. And Senator, if I could ask, um, add one last point. Um, adding rental payment to the credit files at scale would materially drive home ownership in this country. If a consumer can make their rent payments consistently, they can make their mortgage payments. And if they qualify for a mortgage, they can start to build general, generational wealth, as you pointed out. Absolutely. And in conclusion, if there are potential CFBP announcements coming down the pipe, I hope that those will be done in accordance with the notice and comment process that's required by law. And I hope you will all consider reliable risk-based data, including all types of debt. As you know, they're important to the work that you do. The more data that we have, the more people have access to credit. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank, the, thank the three of you for being here today. I appreciate your testimony, your commitment to work with this committee. Uh, the committee